Greetings, tourists, and welcome to another video. Today, we are going to continue the White Forest Saga. Uh, as you guys already know, the Sinful Spoils era debuted last year around this date in October. And it's been around one year, and we've still gotten Sinful Spoils support. Uh, it all started with the Bellstar, the Black Witch. And then a few sets later, we realized that Diabellstar had a rival called Diabells. And then on Infinite Forbidden, we got uh, what was called the White Forest team, which was the archetype that connected uh, both witches and the Sinful Spoils cards. Uh, a little bit later than that, on Rage of the Abyss, we got the introduction of the Azaminas, which was like what entailed the origins of the Sinful Spoils uh, to begin with. Now, with Supreme Guard Darkness, that saga continues. And we're going to continue that saga with Azamina LZ of the White Forest. Prior to uh, Supreme Darkness, uh, there was no real synergy between White Forest and Azamina outside of its lore. Uh, now we have an Azamina monster that is also a White Forest monster. Let's read its effects. You can reveal this card in your hand, special summon one White Forest or Azamina monster from your hand. During your main phase, you can fusion summon one Azamina fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. If this card is sent to the graveyard as a secret material, you can add a simple spells card from your deck to your hand. You can only use each effect once per turn. So there's a lot of things this card can do. Uh, and there's a lot of things that this card ties into White Forest. The first thing is, it is an illusion monster. Uh, and that detail is very important because if you read half of these Azamina monsters or all of them, they all require an illusion monster as a fusion material. So this card all, uh, by itself is already a catalyst for all the Azamina monsters. Adding to that, it has a self special summon effect, but not only that, it can special summon any white forest. This is also important because uh, now you have the ability to just siphon some of your White Forest cards without just relying on your normal summon. And that is a very important detail because with uh, cards like Astella and cards like Sylvie, there were not very many ways to extend with the White Forest theme uh, and get into your synchros. The last thing to note is this card adds any sinful spoils uh, when it's synchro summoned. It can add like the old sinful spoils cards. It can add sinful spoils deception. Now Sussurus of the sinful spoils has a better use than what it did prior. Uh, it also like bridges you into the Azamina engine with this deception. Uh, as I mentioned prior, there are so many ways to, uh, for this card to be utilized. Um, but we have four more set cards, which means there are four more cards to look into when it comes to the tie-in with the Asaminas. Let's go with this one. So this is called Sinful Spoils of the White Forest. And this card reads, if you control a Fiend, an Illusion, or a Spellcaster monster, activate one of these effects. Special summon one Fiend, Illusion, or Spellcaster monster from your hand. Fusion summon one Fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. If this card is sent to the graveyard to activate a monster effect, you can set this card. You can only use each effect of Sinful Spoils of White Forest once per turn. So the first thing to note is, this card is both a Sinful Spoils and a White Forest card. 
You can tutor it with the um, Azamina L set. You can tutor it with Sovi. You can tutor it with uh, Arciella. Uh, but you can also set it with the Bellstar, the Black Witch. Uh, and it also has synergy with all the White Forest cards because it can reset itself if it's sent uh, as the cost for some of their effects. Uh, as far as past uh, practicality goes, uh, this card is really good for White Forest because one thing that White Forest struggles with is combo extending with their monsters outside of Arceola and Elset. Now this card can just give you the additional like function of just combo extending with more cards. Also, take note, it says uh, you can special summon any Fiend, Illusion, or Spellcaster monster if you control the Fiend, Illusion, or Spellcaster monster. So this ju doesn't just tie in to White Forest. You can also use this card in like other Fiend strategies, other Illusion strategies, other Spellcaster strategies. Uh, then we have the last, the, the, the fusion summon effect. So essentially this is just a way to just summon your Azamina monsters uh, without relying on just the Azamina all set. So this card is not really that powerful. However, with its wide variety of uses as a combo standard and how easily searchable this card is, uh, I can foresee this card being utilized somehow in some way in the future. Also, it is a quick play spell. So, let's say for example, your, your opponent uh, like tries to play it uh, right into your Rhea Silvera. Uh, there's nothing that says you can fuse Rhea Silvera with another copy of itself. So, let's say just for a, a big example, your opponent just Forbidden Droplets or Dark Ruler No More's discard, and you have the White Forest spell set. You can just use this spell card and fuse into another copy of Rhea Silvera. That's just like one of the many examples. So, as far as practicality goes, this card could be really useful. Also, you have other disruptions, like for example, more Regina, that just activates um, like whenever a Sinful Spoils or a Samina card is activated. So this also triggers it that way. Uh, our Muru Arcielago also searches this card. So a lot of, a lot of synergy right there. Uh, let's look into Sinful Spoils Awakening. So this card reads, if you control a low 5 or higher illusion monster and your opponent controls 3 or more monsters, target up to 3 cards they control, any cards, return them to the hand. If you control a level 5 or a higher illusion monster and this card's in your graveyard, you can set this card but banish it when it leaves the field. Uh, I am not a big fan of this card. Uh, the setup for this card is actually not that hard. Like, just controlling Diabell or controlling Diabells or controlling any Azamina monster can just uh, make this card viable. The big issue with this card is your opponent needs to control three or more monsters. Uh, that's not very practical uh, for what this card wants to be doing. Uh, essentially, you might just want a better upkeep for what this card does. Uh, so, so far, I am not a fan of any Sinful Spells Trap card that we've gotten in the game yet. I think my favorite out of all of them is uh, the Silvera Trap. But, yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, Sinful Spells Awakening. Now, we're going to look into two new spell cards. Uh, two with different uses, but they have the same name. Uh, the first one we're going to show is called Like the Diabell. So this card reads, if a spell trap is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, set one spell and trap card from your hand or graveyard, but it cannot be activated this turn. 
during your main phase, you can banish three spell slash trap cards from your graveyard, including this card, special summon one Diabell monster from your hand or graveyard. So, I'm not a fan of the first effect. However, I am a really big fan of the second effect. Summoning back a Diabell monster means summoning back a Diabell Star the Black Witch, uh, Diabelle the Queen of the White Forest, Diabelle the original Sinful Swords Keeper. Heck, you can even summon. Let me find it. You can even summon Snake Eyes Diabelle Star uh, with this spell card. So, as far as targets go for this card's effect, at least the graveyard effect, uh, I think they're quite viable. The big issue I have with this card is. The condition for its first effect is kind of steep. Like, this card is not a plus one upon activation. Adding to that, the card that you're setting with this card cannot be activated. If it allowed you to activate whatever you're setting, then this card would have been a little bit uh, better. In fact, I would have said this card would have been splashable for a lot of decks. Uh, now we're gonna show play of the Diabelle. If a spell attack card is sent to a graveyard to activate a card effect, same condition as the other one, you can send one illusion or spellcaster monster from your hand, deck, or extra deck to the graveyard. During your main phase, you can banish three cards. Uh, same condition as the other Diabelle spell to special summon a Diabelle monster. This one is a lot better than the other one because it can send any illusion or spellcaster monster. Uh, there are a lot of spellcasters and monsters in the game where you would want to send to the graveyard. I'm talking about Dogmatica monsters, Shadow monsters, uh, like the Chimera monsters uh, are another good example of cards you want to be setting, uh, sending the Tilewist. Uh, the one that can reborn illusion monsters is another really good target for this card. Uh, adding to that, you can just send a Diabelle. And sending a Diabelle means that you can use this card to special summon the Diabelle after you use the first effect. So, um, uh, um, 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 when in practicality goes, like the Diabelle is not a good one. Play the Diabelle is a way better one. So, now that we're looking into all these new cards, what does this mean for White Forest? What does this mean for the Diabelle theme? So, these cards don't add a lot to this archetype outside of Azamina Elset. This card bridges both archetypes like very, very fondly. And the really cool thing about uh, bridging these two archetypes is uh, other archetypes that work well with Azamina can work well with these new cards. Uh, like this can bridge you into the Chimera engine because this searches for any illusion so this can uh, this card can add you the Azamina L set. The Fiendsmith engine are Fiend monsters that work well with the theme. Uh, to take note, we do have two Azamina monsters that need to fuse with Fiend monsters. And to this day, there are no Diabelle or White Forest cards that are Fiend monsters. So you will have to rely on other Fiend engines in order to fuse for those monsters. And that's where the Fiendsmith come in. That's where the uh, like the Chimera thing comes in, another uh, and the other really good monsters that work well with the theme are Guide and Quem and Blazing Cartesia. These are light spellcaster monsters that just aid your fusion summoning. Uh, and there are already combos with these cards that just bridges you into the Azamina engine. Uh, feel free to like this video if you want to see that in the future. Uh, Dogmatica monsters are really good for this too. Uh, like, 
you can try to activate their automatic effects and yes they do lock you out of their extra deck but remember we have a quick play spell that just enables you access to your Asamina monsters so you can just use your Dogmatica monsters on your turn to set up and then on your opponent's turn just use the disruption behind all the Dogmatica cards except Dogmatica Punishment that one hard locks you into the extra deck for two turns so be mindful of that uh, but then just bridge into Azamina into for other pieces of disruption uh, another thing is like the Chimera engine works really well with Azamina uh, because all these Azaminas are illusion monsters so if they are just in the graveyard you can just reborn them with like other Chimera monsters I hope you found this vid video informative to your liking and understanding. Uh, I don't know if this support is promising for White Forest, however, it is really good support uh, that just bridges you into the theme. And who knows, maybe we'll see a future for Azamina that just not involves Snake Eyes. Uh, but yeah, until next time, keep practicing and keep dueling.